Right, um, now, a very important subject is responding to takeout doubles. Now, I don't know why it's never really crossed my mind to do this before. Um, I've done takeout doubles and variants of takeout doubles, negative doubles, reopening doubles, Sputnik doubles, which are the same thing as negative doubles. But then, never really thought about what you do as the person who your partner has just doubled. Mm -hmm. And I see mistakes happen uh, all the time with regards to responding to takeout doubles, and I will explain why. So, first of all, one heart double, it says, decent hands, short chin hearts, I want you to bid something. I think we're all pretty comfortable with that. Takeout doubles are a very useful, very flexible bid. Um, and they often get east out of a problem hand when east was about to open the bidding and now can't make a sensible bid. So that's what takeout doubles are typically useful for. They're especially useful against preemptive bids. Two hearts, three hearts, they take away even more and more and more room. Double is a good way to get back in. Um, so, responding to a takeout double, you've got to be a little bit careful because your partner has, in a sense, forced you to bid. So, this is practically forcing. The reason I'm, saying, I'm not saying it's absolutely forcing is because you could pass if you think one heart is going off, but it just doesn't happen uh, very often anyway. So, double says, please bid something. So, if you bid something at the lowest available level, you might have absolutely nothing at all. Because your partner has said, please bid. So if you had a hand that had 4 3 3 3 and 0 points. And four, 4 small hearts. Yeah, 4 small hearts. You've still got to bid something. You've got to bid something. So what that means is, if you do bid at the lowest available level, you are promising your partner absolutely nothing. So there's a danger in thinking, oh well, let's have a little chat. Partner's asked me to bid, I'll bid spades, see if they have a spade fit, yada yada. So you bid one spade which is incorrect. You bid one spade, and then your partner thinks, I've asked my partner to bid, they've bid at the lowest level possible. They might not have anything at all. So East may well never bid again. In fact, shouldn't, unless they've got a, very good, a, a better hand than they've already promised. So, with East doubling, you bidding at the lowest level, East, it might go pass, pass, pass. I appreciate the one level potentially won't be left by the opponents, but it could genuinely go pass, pass, pass. Okay, that's very bad, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's because whenever you're responding to a takeout double, any bid you make is non-forcing. The only forcing bid you can make is bidding their suit, which mm -hmm. I'll come to in a second. So if you bid one spade, it's a massive undersell. Huge. Because you're responding and saying, I don't really want to bid, you're making me bid, so I'm bidding a spade. Whether partner doubles or not, we'd have been happy to bid a spade. So now our hand is much better, isn't it? Mm. Because of what we can assume from East bid, East double, they must have three cards in spades. So therefore, you have a fit. So what you can assume, because you have five cards in your suit, unless they've got an exceptional hand that was doubling first and then jumping somewhere next, you can assume that they have a spade fit, and therefore, you can do it as if you are the opening side. So you can assume an opening hand, because they're the opening hand, you can assume a fit, because they promised you three cards and spades, and therefore, you can bid as if you were the openers. So if your partner opens one spade, would you pass? Absolutely not. It wouldn't even enter your mind. So that what, what bidding one spade says is, if you open one of my suit, I would have passed. Mm -hmm. So you can see now, hopefully, how much of an undersell one spade really is. Mm -hmm. So a good little tagline opposite a takeout double, when responding to a takeout double, you must take up the slack. You must bid to the level you think is correct, assuming your partner has an opening hand and a fit, which you, you can make that assumption. So, the losing trick count is a very good little tool. Now normally it's for the openers only, but here, by, with this takeout double, we have pseudo become the openers. Because we actually have the points, not them, they just happen to have an opening hand first. Mm. But it's actually us with the good hands, isn't it, really? Yeah. So, if you were to do a losing trick count, you would get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. You can assume seven here, opening hand. Mm -hmm. So therefore the correct bit is four spades. <laughs> Not one spade. <coughs> See the difference? I did. Yeah, <laughs> massively out. And the reason you have to take up all of that room is because two spades, one spade, two spades, three spades are all non-forcing. Your partner may not bid again. If they've got a minimum 12 with three, with three spades to the king, let's say, 
they won't necessarily bid again. In fact, shouldn't, because if you think four spades is right, you should have done it now, not two spades or three spades. Mm. So because you think four spades is the correct bid, bid four spades. So when you're responding to a takeout double, you can pretend your partner has opened one of your favourite suit. So your partner has opened, in inverted commas, one spade. What would you bid? If you think about it that way, you're pretty much in the right mark. So if partner opens one spade, what would we bid? Four spades. So mm -hmm. in a sense, our partner has doubled, i.e. opened one of whichever suit we like, so therefore we should respond accordingly. It's very important you, you get in your head that any bid you make of a natural suit is non-forcing. So if you think your partner's going to bid again, they won't necessarily because it's non-forcing. So you've got to get that in your head. So therefore, there is only one way to force. 